Hello. The data center infrastructure landscape is taken into various forms and shape in past few years. It is going from a centralized warehouse model into a decentralized architecture where your workloads are distributed across your co-locations, your branch offices, your remote offices, and also into a various public clouds. This is Muhammad Marakotatil. In this short session, let's understand how Cisco ACI multi-site address some of these use cases. So to start with, I want to present you a reference topology. In this topology, you have DC1 and DC2 and both DCs have your typical data center building blocks like DMZ tenant, you have WAN tenant, extranet, core server farm block, all those elements interconnected using various L4 and L7 devices. Now considering the applications and the business requirements in terms of fault tolerance, high availability of the site and also about various different component interconnected, usual requirement is to extend your network and security policy across the data center space. If you closely analyze the architecture, we are talking about extending this networking and security capability across your multiple data centers and also to the public clouds. Example here is AWS and Azure. To share with you the Cisco ACI multi-site benefit, let me start with the core interconnection block which is called as ISN here. It is inter-site network block where you connect between DC1 and DC2. Here with multi-site solutions, the extension of your network and security policy is done through VXLAN. All those L3 and L2 traffics are encapsulated all over VXLAN and extended to DC2. Now if you look at your traditional model, we need to stitch various L2 and L3 construct across the DCI block from your different production workloads. With VXLAN integrations, all those stitching of L2 and L3 constructs are automatically done using multi-site. The second use case I want to talk about is a CloudSec encryption. Using CloudSec, you can encrypt inter-site traffic across the DCs. Another aspect I want you to look at Think about your data center is having these different blocks which is DMZ, production, server farm, all of, all of those. Now extension of these blocks to a different site usually require connecting those different blocks using a physical interface to your DCI switches or manually extending those L2 and L3 from this block to those DCI switches. Here with this solution you can easily extend those required segment logically using your ACI policy construct. And to be realistic you have your workloads 
served from different data centers. That means you also need to have your L4 and L7 elements available across the site. Now, with all the practical purpose, mostly this L4 and L7 devices highly available local to the site itself. But what if, if you have your active instance of your L4 and L7 device in DC1 and the standby in DC2. So here we are talking about failover capability extended across the DCs which really demand an L2 or L3 stretch between the DCs usually an L2 stretch because we are talking about replication traffic, failover traffic extended across the DCs now this can be easily addressed by your L2 and L3 stretch capability which is offered by the solution here. Now vMotion is a highly needed solution especially if you want to go for a maintenance activity of your virtualized environment from DC1 to DC2. You can do a vMotion and you can make sure that the maintenance is taken care of without disrupting your active VMs. Now main benefit with multi-site there is an option called BUM optimization which is basically broadcast and unicast and multicast traffic so without flooding broadcast traffic how can you extend your subnet across the DC so this is idea this is the key benefit here if you look at it from application and server clustering perspective with this let me move to some of the key use cases let's start with the first use cases which is a centralized capability it's offered part of this multi-site solution it is a software element which allow you to do all this discussed point centrally across the site which is called MSO, multi-site orchestrator. So with this MSO software, it is a centralized software cluster where you have three nodes in the cluster. The high availability part is already taken care of with that three node cluster. The MSO gives you a user interface where you can configure and manage all those use cases which I mentioned which is bump traffic optimization L2 L3 stretch across the site also doing cloud sec all this can be centrally done so I would say this is the main differentiator where in traditional model even though you have L2 and L3 stretch capabilities whenever you want to extend you need to log into each and every standalone boxes and stitch all those L2, L3 on the standalone boxes manually, which is an administrative headache. And usually when you do this kind of activity on the DCI, no need to mention, you have to be really careful. You should not be missing some configurations or deleting some existing config. Right. So all those administrative typos, issues, mistakes are already taken care of when you do this centrally. And another very, very good use case I would highly encourage you to explore that is a micro recommendation across the site where if you do a VMM integration using your v uh, v sender or hyper v you can stretch your virtualized workload across the site and you can also make use of indra epg indra epg isolations capabilities across the site so that is a micro secondation use case you can definitely 
make use of. Now, the next use case is a highly asked feature set. I want to be very specific here because uh, this is where your actual active active kind of discussion comes into play. So here we are talking about how you can have ingress traffic optimization into your data center from your corporate network. For example, from your campus or from your branch offices. If you pay attention, I deliberately mentioned NLB IP application traffic, which is a very specific use case, right? So let's get into this and understand more. So with this use case, we are making use of a feature called host route advertisement on your border lake. So let's say you have some of your subnet stretched across the site and you want to influence that specific endpoint access part of the subnet from your campus or from your remote branch offices. So this host route advertisement allows you to advertise slash 30 IP of those endpoint to the upstream network which goes to your campus and your remote offices. So whenever there is a request for that specific endpoint, it can actually select the correct optimized route. So this allows you to do a very granular ingress path optimization to your multiple data centers. So I'm showing the traffic flow where your subnet A is stretched across the site and when I do an advertisement, I am advertising in this example subnet A1 from DC1 and the subnet A2 from DC2. So whenever there is a request to the server 10, it comes to DC1. Whenever there is a request to server 12, it will come to DC2. Yeah, that's idea. Again, this could be a specific use case where this specific application is not load balanced. If it is load balanced, usually you will have VIP IP, which is getting advertised. So in that case, you might not be needing these kind of solutions. But think about an application which is not uh, load balanced and you want to optimize the traffic to those applications respective of whether it is hosted in DC1 or DC2. That is a specific use case. I hope the session was good enough to give you some insight. I would really encourage you to visit my blog on multi-site. Thank you so much for your time. We'll see you soon in another video. Thank you.